Australia has many stories of success against the odds. From humble beginnings, rags to riches. Meet Australians who have made their own way, their lives, loves, triumphs and tragedies. And what they can offer others who, as they once did, just need a chance. True stories of Australians who have dared to be the best that they can. Taking the time to reflect on where it all began. Con Macris arrived in Australia as a 16-year-old boy with nothing, but today commands a property group worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Born into a poor family at the end of World War II and learning to survive on the tough post-war streets of Athens, he did all he could to help his family to survive before heading into the great unknown of life overseas. With nothing to his name and no one to help him, he turned a strange land into a land of opportunity through sheer tenacity, guts and hard work. Today, Con Macris is recognised as South Australia's richest man and one of Australia's most successful entrepreneurs. That's my help to you. But he will still help to make a difference where it's needed, on where it all began. Con Macris was born in the small Greek village of Ligorin into a desperately poor family. Greece herself, ravaged by World War II, famine and a brutal civil war, was in turmoil. Opportunities were few. Hardship was plentiful. With nothing left for them in their home village, Con's family moved to Athens, where his father Spiros toiled in menial jobs for little reward. It was tough. My father was a waiter in a restaurant and a caretaker in a apartment block and it was hard work. I see your parents working like that and that, that was a good life. I said to myself, I've got to do something when I grow up and you know, I help my parents and I did that. I have been working since I was a young kid, probably from about 10 years old. You've got to make a living. You've got to help your parents to pay the rent. My mother and my father, they were family, family people. I got everything from them. And my father, I can tell you, he was such a good person, such a good person. I was always there to help my father. Con tried to juggle working with his father and school. But just shy of his 12th birthday, he was forced to leave school for good and began working for a local seamstress. You know, my job there it was to go to get materials. My boss would say, go get me 20 meters of that, 50 meters of that. Then I would go to the three, four big stores in Athens back then. And uh, they were saying to me that uh, if you come and get it from here, we're going to give you 20, 25% uh, you know, to you. And I think I became a businessman, but making money this way back then. I wanted to take all the money to my mum back then and help her with the rent, to buy the rent and, you know, the other expenses. And, uh, no, I was very proud of that, you know, I was helping my family was very important to me. Still suffering from the combined effects of bitter conflict and political unrest, Greece's economy continued to falter. And at only 16 years of age, Con knew in his heart that there was no future for him in the country of his birth. With unemployment and inflation rampant, he joined the exodus of young Greeks of the time, leaving in search of fresh hope overseas. Most of the young people in Greece that left, uh, and I'm talking thousands and thousands, they went to Canada, they went to America, they went to Germany, Australia, Sweden, uh, uh, you know, the whole Europe. 
A lot of my friends, I see them sometimes when I go to Greece. One comes from uh, Netherlands, the other one's from Sweden, the other one's from Belgium, one from South Africa. Everybody just left back then, you know? It, wasn't, it was very hard to, to get a good job in Greece and get paid. Granted a migrant visa to Australia, Con reluctantly left his beloved family behind and set sail on a month-long odyssey to the other side of the world. Knowing nothing about his destination, except that there were opportunities for those willing to work. As a 16-year-old, Con Macris left his life behind in Greece on a voyage to the other side of the world. But a month at sea did nothing to prepare him for what he would face in Australia. It was very hard. It took me more than 30 days to get here we on a boat. And uh, it was very powerful. You know, that was my life over there that I left behind, you know. I left my friends, I left my girlfriend, and uh, I could speak English back then, you know, I couldn't speak English at all. Con landed in Melbourne in 1963 and made his way to Adelaide, homesick and alone. You have to sort of stand up to your two feet and, you know, find a job, and in those years, easy to get a job, but those jobs, nobody was there. I went to work in a factory and uh, I got a job in the foundry. It was tough. I didn't know if it was sunny day, it was raining outside. I was starting 6.30 in the morning and finished at 9, 10 o'clock in the night. I used to work uh, overtime every day, seven days a week. And I was getting letters from my girlfriend, my friends, and uh, they sent me letters to say they, last weekend they went to this island, uh, the next island, and there I was in the, in the foundry working seven days a week. <laughs> you know, that was very hard, very hard. Uh, I used to go home and cry, you know, cry on a Sunday and, you know. Oh, I had to be strong. I didn't have my parents. I didn't have my friends. I didn't have nobody, you know. So, and that's why it was more easier for me to work seven days a week to over years, because that's when you forget, you know. I saved all my money. I had a dream to be successful because um, when I left Greece, uh, my parents they didn't have money. I wanted to be my own boss. I couldn't work, work for somebody else. Maybe for a while, yeah, to get enough money and start my own business. Where I all began, I started in this shop here. In 1967, selling fish and chips to people. And I'm very grateful to this business. They gave me everything what I needed to carry on. I bought uh, a fish shop at, uh, on Green Hill Road, Benside. I worked probably about 18 hours, seven days a week. Quality and service, or well, you can't go wrong. That's what the people they want. They want service and they want quality and cheap prices. Six months after I purchased the fish shop, I purchased the fruit and veg and the grocery store right in this corner here. I remember that I was washing the, the windows late in the night and some people would pass outside. And I remember this particular couple, they stopped and they said to me, the way you're going, uh, very soon you're going to own the whole complex here at the shopping centre. And straight away I thought, only this shopping centre, I'm going to own a lot more than this one. Now financially established, Con was able to look out for even greater opportunities. I found an opportunity to, to sell those businesses and go to Southeast. I went to Nara Court because I bought this big cafeteria and then I bought it and I turned it to a chicken shop back then. I was one of the pioneers of the chicken industry at the time, you know, barbecue chickens. Con seemed to have a happy knack for picking retailing trends well in advance. And as his operations expanded, 
he was the first to introduce drive-through service across regional Victoria. I don't believe in luck. You create your own luck. There's nothing about luck. You make good decisions, you make money. You make wrong decisions, you lose your money. His next decision was crucial to his success. Back in Adelaide, Con had always been a retailer, so he understood both the drivers and frustrations of the retail industry well. Believing he knew the formula and balance for retail success, he decided he would move from retailer to landlord. When I was buying and setting up chicken shops, uh, I would buy the property, you know, the shop, set up the business, sell the business, keep the property and get the rental, you know? The move proved to be Con's real breakthrough. Now with a young family, he was determined that his success so far was to be only the beginning. I was ambitious, I wanted to get ahead, I wanted to give my kids and uh, my wife uh, a good life. So, characteristically, he rolled up his sleeves and went to work on his biggest venture yet. Con Macris had shifted the direction of his business from retailing to retail landlord. Now, with a growing family but still the same burning ambition for success, he decided to sell his chain of chicken shops and raise the stakes higher still. I decided to buy shop centers and uh, my first shop center was a Newton. In what was to become a hallmark of his property acquisitions, where others saw a stagnant retail venture, Con saw things differently. It was a terrible shop center when I bought it. Terrible, you know. People will tell you, the whole Adelaide will tell you that. I bought it because I, I, I saw the opportunity. And today is the pe best performing CBD property in Adelaide. Much of Con's astute judgment in developing shopping centres has come from his time at the coalface of the retail industry. His understanding of his tenants' needs and his empathy of their problems is deep. I care more than my tenants. A lot of people tell me that. Said, geez, why, why are you like that? You care more than your tenants. I said, of course, because I have to buy the banks. <laughs> You know what I mean? So they have to be successful, you know? This is the success of my business. He's a man of action, not a man of words. Uh, and I think that he uh, will do his best by people. He values all his tenants and is a fair man where he will do his utmost best to treat them uh, the best way he can to sustain them. He's always said that the lifeblood of the business is the tenants. I mean, that's where the cash flow comes from. So, um, tenants are loyal to Con, he's loyal to the tenants. That's what he enjoys most uh, in business, is being a proud landlord. If they're going through a rough time, he's there to support that. And he has an attitude, well, if they ain't gonna make it, I ain't gonna make it. If it's tough for them, it's gonna be tough for me. We're three partners in this business. The banks, the markets group, and the tenants. The tenants, they have to be good with the customers. They have a good business, buy the rental, so I can buy the bank. Everybody makes something out of it. Following that simple mantra, today, the Macris Group is a $1.5 billion company with shopping centres and properties in Adelaide, Melbourne and Sydney. Recently adding the Marina Mirage complex on the Gold Coast to its portfolio, the Macris Group continues to expand, with Con showing no signs of slowing down, at least not yet. If you do something that you love and, uh, and give you satisfaction, 
Why to give it up? <laughs> it's not the money. I love what I'm doing. And let's face it, the life that I live is like a dream now. Indeed, much has changed in the life of Con Macris since he landed in Australia with nothing but that dream. But Con himself is still very much the same person as that young man who left his life and family behind in Greece all those years ago. I think, um, you know, he's very proud of his country and very proud of where he came from, but where he is today. Um, he's uh, achieved so much. I wish my father was alive to see that I stayed the person he knew before he died. I didn't have a lot of time with my father, and that's, that's very sad, you know, because if, I, if he was alive today, I would have thanked him every day, you know? I would have thanked him every day, because he taught me something that would, which to become successful helped me in my life. He would have been very proud of me. Soon, Con will meet another young man another survivor who too arrived in Australia with nothing and no one, but having seen and escaped tragedy. Landing in Australia with only a dream and a determination to succeed, Con Macris has worked his way to the very top of the business world. Today, his property empire has major holdings in four states, making Con South Australia's richest business person and one of Australia's most recognised and awarded retail tycoons. I survived here without my parents. I survived here. I work hard and I survive. You can send me to the jungle and I will survive there, you know? I'll do something there. <laughs> Knowing firsthand just how hard it can be migrating to a strange new country, Con has been impressed with the work of the Australian Refugee Association. The ARA helps newly arrived refugees by providing pathways for them to integrate into their new communities and to begin to pick up the pieces of shattered lives. As part of where it all began, Con was asked to identify someone who he believes has overcome great challenges themselves and would benefit from a helping hand. Through the ARA, Con has met Innocent, a 16-year-old Congo refugee. After our family being passed away. You lost your parents. Yeah. They passed away. Yeah. Innocent's tragic story of civil war separation and survival is one that is repeated all too often across an increasingly troubled Africa. His parents were killed when he was only two years old. His older brother, Christopher, bravely fended for the two boys until they were separated as brutal war escalated around them. I uh, know where to live, and then I went in refugee camp. Right. Believing that his brother had also been killed, Innocent was forced into an orphanage, beginning an 11-year struggle for survival amid the daily heartbreak of starvation, refugee camps, and savage warfare. I don't know really how I survived through that. But you did, that's the, the good thing is you did. Yeah. Unknown to Innocent, Christopher was alive and had found his way to Australia through a humanitarian refugee program. Amazingly, through the Red Cross, Christopher found Innocent and with the help of the ARA brought his brother to Australia and a brand new life. Today, Innocent has a dream, just like Con Macris had when he arrived in this country. He wants to complete years 10, 11 and 12 and get the necessary marks to be able to study medicine at university. There are some people around the world who are suffering, so I need to, I need to help those who are suffering in the moment. 
Con is astounded at what Innocent has had to endure in his short life and has decided to offer this determined young survivor a chance. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sponsor you. I'm going to pay you for the three years, your schooling. I'm going to give you the first year 6000 He has offered to pay for each year of Innocent's secondary schooling, provided he passes all his subjects and remains totally focused on his studies. Then for the third year, I'm going to give you 12000 oh. Okay. Con has provided but Innocent not charity, not but charity, an opportunity. So, that's my help to you, and uh, I want you to know that this country, Australia, it's, uh, it's got beautiful people and it's a beautiful country, okay? Uh, I think I'm, I'm dreaming. The innocent boy from Africa, eh? I would like to tell my sponsor that I'm very, very happy to what he did, to what he told me. I will make sure that I work hard so that in order for me to make him happy too. It is now up to Innocent to follow in the footsteps of Con Macris and forge his own way, lay out his own future and follow his dreams. My story is a true story of my life. It was hard, but I achieved my dreams in this country and my advice to the new generation, if you want to achieve your dreams, work hard, be honest, and uh, everything will come, and that's my wishes to you.